Now, for our next program, part of the program, I had the ple pleasure earlier of introducing the current CWI director, and I'm very happy, happy that I also get to talk with the former CWI director, uh, Jos Baten. Hi. Welcome, Jos. Hans. It's uh, great to have you here. Um, so what we're going to do is you recorded a presentation, which is going to be available to everyone uh, later. Everyone can see it online. Mm -hmm. uh, but for now, we're going to look at some clips from this, uh, some vid videos of this presentation. Uh, and you and I will be talking about those highlights of the presentation. Okay. So I'd say let's roll the first clip. Welcome to this talk entitled The Computer and Me. I was to have given this talk on October 1st of last year. Uh, for my farewell from both the CWI and the University of Amsterdam. The talk is entitled The Computer and Me uh, because I look at my personal experiences with computers and computer research. Uh, the message, the take-home message, if you will, that I want to convey in this talk is uh, that uh, we should change the way we teach the foundations of computer science to our students in order to relate more closely to their context. So again, if you want to see the full clip, uh, check out cwi.nl later. But for now, Jos, let me ask you, you say that uh, uh, the context of the students is, is very relevant and not the way we teach computer science now is not appropriate to their context. Yes. What do you mean with that? Well, you have to realize that uh, all computer science uh, students take a course in their first year usually where they are introduced in the foundations introduced into the foundations of computer science and this is usually a course called uh, automata theory and formal languages mm -hmm. and in this course they learn uh, what is computability they learn what can you do with a computer and what can you not do with a computer and uh, for this they use a model of a computer in order to reason about that mm -hmm. uh, and this computer model uh, is usually called a Turing machine. And my thesis in this talk uh, that I elaborate on is that this Turing machine doesn't relate to a computer as the students know it. As the computer, your desktop computer, or what kind of computer well, do you Well, any mean? computer, uh, any computer that students use nowadays is very much connected is very much interacting with the user, uh, with other computers, with the internet. So it's always connected. And the computer model they use in the course, mm -hmm. the Turing machine, is not connected at all. Uh, I sh can say that computer is deaf, dumb and blind. And that's not something the students are used to. So our, our cell phones and our uh, normal yeah. computers, all of those are way more connected than what is taught in this first yeah, course. right. And would you say that uh, it's often the case that education is sort of lagging behind reality, right? Would you say that this is more true for computer science? Well, it's true for this course. I wouldn't know about everything of computer science, but uh, this one is lagging behind uh, 40 years, over 40 years. It was... Uh, in around 1975 that uh, the first terminal was introduced into our computer centers. And from that point on, we were able to converse with computers, to talk with them. To interact along interact. the way. Interact, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, before that, so the first time I met a computer, that was not possible anymore. So 40 years, I think that it needs doing now to uh, change something. We have some catching up to do. Yeah. I think in your next clip there is an example of one of these modern day computers that Jos is talking about. Let's roll the clip. Uh, the, the difficulty is that this Turing machine is really like the first computer that I showed you. Uh, and that's a, a, a computer that can only compute a function. Whereas the second uh, the Turing machine is really a deaf, dumb and blind computer. It does not interact uh, with the user. It, it had the only interaction with the user is the pr provision of the uh, computer program at the start uh, and the uh, collection of the uh, answer at the end. And if I look at a modern day computer as, as this self-driving car that I show you here, it's a modern day computer. And this computer, this modern-day computer, is all about interaction. 
Uh, uh, it's hard to imagine that you can code this computer in the self-driving car by means of a Turing machine. Uh, because that would entail that every interaction all along the way when it's driving has to be done, has to be put on the tape beforehand. And uh, you can only see uh, what it has done at the end, when it has reached its destination or made an accident along the way. Whereas, in fact, this computer is interacting all the time. It's full of sensors and actuators and uh, it needs to see this pedestrian when it crosses the road. So, uh, the Turing machine model that we have uh, in in this course on the basics of computer science is really a very old-fashioned computer. It's a computer before the advent of the terminal. Uh, it does not interact at all. And uh, so what I uh, aim for is that we should have a better Turing machine that can interact. So just the Turing machine teaching is kind of old-fashioned, is it your argument? Um, how do you imagine that we're, we should change uh, this course? How should this be adapted to modern day machines? Well, I don't want to throw away the Turing machine because it's very useful in uh, explaining basic concepts, but I want to enhance it. I, I want to uh, change the Turing machine into what we call a reactive Turing machine mm. uh, that uh, can interact, that can talk to us, that can see us, etc. And uh, so I want to enhance this basic model uh, and change it into a reactive Turing machine. And by that means, I want to redo uh, the, the stuff of uh, automata theory again, but now enhance it with interaction. And, well, look at these uh, theorems again, but look at them uh, from a new viewpoint, so to speak. So don't throw out the old course notes, but add on to them? Yes and integrate this with process theory, as I have been researching for a long time. Just for the viewers at home, process theory, what is that? Well, process theory is the theory of interaction, the theory of things in parallel or distributed systems. The, and, and that is called uh, also concurrency theory. And it's, it's also called process theory, because what it is, if, if you consider the old-fashioned Turing machine as computing a function, then uh, in process theory, actually what you're doing is executing a process. And this process consists of inputs, outputs, in arbitrary order. And uh, you can, well, you can talk to it and interact with it all along the way. Yeah. Of course, computers are something that changes really rapidly. Yes. Uh, you, you just mentioned that we are now like 40 years behind in our uh, teaching of yes. uh, basic computer science. Um, are you afraid that as soon as you, you like adapt this teaching to this modern day computer, that it's also going to be old fashioned again? Well, I'm, I'm not so pessimistic on that. Uh, I think, uh, yes, computers will keep developing, but I do think that the foundations will remain the same yeah. for some time. Foundations don't develop so quickly. Uh, and maybe earlier today you saw something about quantum computers. Yeah, well, they can speed up some calculations uh, extraordinarily fast, mm -hmm. but the basic principles remain the same. It's still a computer. Yeah. And uh, so, so very foundations much foundation do not change that quickly, yeah. I think. Okay. Uh, I think that we can look at the third video of uh, Jos's presentation. Uh, I just give you an example here of, of an executable process. Uh, this is the, the queue, the first in, first out queue, the FIFO queue, which is a well-known process uh, from computer science. You can always enter something into the queue, uh, but you can also read out at any time the head of the queue. And you can see that uh, the picture for the Turing machine, for the reactive Turing machine for this queue, has only four states. And uh, so it's pretty easy to describe this process by means of a reactive Turing machine. And uh, you see on the bottom there, this is uh, figure 5.9. In the meantime, I've written some 160 pages of uh, course notes. 
And uh, so here's the title slide, the title page of uh, these course notes. It's called Models of Computations, Automata, Formal Languages, and Communicating Processes. And so this is the last version of these notes. And so if you're wondering what I will do after uh, my uh, retirement, uh, uh, then uh, what I will do, what I want to do, I'm not, I do not know if I'm succeeding, just like I wrote the first book on process algebra, I want to turn these course notes into the first book on uh, the integration of process theory and automata theory. So this is what I want to focus on uh, in, in the remainder of my career. That's a good ambi ambition to have. Yeah. How do your students respond to these, uh, well, the, the course notes that you've made so far? Uh, is it something that they feel more connected to with these modern day computers? Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, I, I've taught it in two different uh, versions. I, I started out teaching this right away, uh, uh, integrated with the course on, uh, on Turing machines on automata theory. Uh, two first-year students. I did this in Eindhoven a couple times, and uh, there I developed uh, the the first part of this. And uh, now the last years, I've been teaching this course, and and they seem to like it. <laughs> and now the last years, I've been teaching this course, this integrated course, to uh, students in at the University of Amsterdam in the Master of Logic, and they helped me in developing this course further. And they seemed very enthusiastic. In, in fact, they, they were sad to see me retire because <laughs> they, uh, I will not give this course again. Yeah, how are they helping you in developing these courses? Well, th uh, these students in the Master of Logic, they are excellent students. They can prove uh, mathematical theorems uh, and they can develop the theory uh, as we, uh, we, as, as we de develop this theory. So they... Uh, they helped me proving some stuff, and they helped me. Uh, they helped uh, giving me feedback on the text that I have, mm. and so. Uh, and I also had, for instance, uh, a master student uh, proving a theorem that I put in the course, etc. Yeah. And is this collaboration continuing into your retirement, or is it up to you now? Well, I <laughs> still have, as I say in my talk, I still have some collaborators mm -hmm. that I want to develop this further. Uh, I'm not so good at writing a book by myself, so I need some co-authors, yes. Some joint so efforts. I may get other students, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> and how far along uh, is, is this book by now? When can we expect it? It'll be uh, at least a couple of years yet, um, I think. So if all goes well, maybe two years or, or three, yeah. And do you know if... Um, different universities have shown interest in, in, in this or do you intend to enroll this in uh, Eindhoven or nationwide? Well, I did or already <laughs> in Eindhoven, but mm. uh, since I left there, they have reversed uh, <laughs> the, the curriculum. So, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, well, d d if you want to uh, formulate a big ambition, I want every university in the world to use this, uh, of course. Yeah? Yeah, it's a good ambition to have. Yeah, you your ambition shouldn't be too small, I think. I agree, yeah. <laughs> so it, it seems like you are still very much invested in uh, computer science and computer science education. Um, mm. Do you have any other ambitions for the future uh, that are not related to your uh, career? Uh, of course, uh, and, and that's why I say it'll take some years yet, uh, because I have other interests that I want to pursue also. Huh? And uh, I want to mention two. Uh, first of all, uh, well, the the, the family uh, of, um, of my wife and children, they are enhanced now by uh, sons-in-law. <laughs> and uh, I have four grandchildren. I want to see more of those, uh, of the grandchildren. Uh, this is not so well possible in corona times, but since some of them live uh, pretty far away. Uh, but I want to see more of them uh, and see more of my family and everyone around it. And um, the other thing is uh, my wife and I life, like very much uh, long distance walking. So we yeah. want to do some trackings uh, if possible. Yeah. 
So the time that you that gets freed up, the time that you can enjoy in your retirement goes yeah, to yeah. family and walking. I I, I definitely want to do that. And yeah. uh, uh, well, I, I we still have some other interests like uh, playing bridge and. Uh, yeah. Uh, reading and uh, etc. And who knows? Maybe on one of the walks, some inspiration will hit you for y for your book. You never know. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, th that happens a lot uh, because uh, I can recommend walking, uh, especially in the mountains. It really clears your head, and, and you can find new thoughts. Yeah. yeah. So to wrap up, we have one more video to play. So Jos, I would invite you to stay for a little minute and uh, watch the next video that we still have coming. In general, ladies and gentlemen, academics don't fancy intuition or gut feelings. They want to see evidence. That's a fact. You, Mr. Barton, are the living proof of the Netherlands is a country where people can achieve their goals. Your father was a baker in Tilburg. You were brought up with hands-on mentality. We had to deliver your father's bread. Put in the effort. That was the motto and you've never forgotten that. And you will always go for it. In 1978, you obtained cum laude your doctorate in logistic and the principles of mathematics at the University of Utrecht. So the baker's son found his way in the modern world of the programming languages for the computers and verification programs that check complex software for errors. Software, often vital, like immobilizers in car engines, medical scanning equipment and large control system in public transport and air traffic. You got your PhD at the University of Minnesota and you returned with your family to the Netherlands. There you became a researcher at the CWI, the Center of Mathematics and Computer Science connected to the University of Amsterdam. Together with other people, you created a large scale of development, ACP, algebra, mm -hmm. of communicating processes. ACP mm -hmm. gives programmers the opportunity to describe processes with mathematical precision. And thanks to this system, computers developed from standalone devices to devices that are able to communicate with each other and work together. A huge step forward. As a result of ACP, a record number of doctorates were awarded at CWI, no less than 30 under your supervision. You published several books and several articles on ACP and made ACP world famous. In 1991, you moved from our national capital to Eindhoven, the city of light. You left CWI and took up an appointment as a professor of computer science in the Faculty of Mathematics and Computer Science, part of the Technical University Eindhoven. You did relevant scientific research, but moreover, you saw that a connection was needed between the different worlds of the university and the industries. You played an important role in the foundation of the Institute of Embedded Systems at the TUA focusing on joining forces. You also established a master degree for the information security. Technology, together with the University of Twente and Nijmegen. Thanks to you, the Innovation Organization of the EU chose Eindhoven as its Benelux headquarters, a division of the European Institute of Technology and Innovation. At the Technical University Eindhoven, you gave lectures supervised 31 doctoral theses and 17 dissertations in total. And as a professor and dean, you showed yourself to be a pragmatist, combining flexibility and decisiveness. Yeah. You didn't allow yourself to be tied down by hierarchy. You took charge by dividing tasks and delegating, giving professionals a lot of space. This way, you enabled science to flourish. Mr. Barton, I can go on with the list of board positions, the number of connections you had with international educational institutes, the open access policy you pro propagated, the in innovative startups that emerged 
through CWI, the number of scientific publications, and so on. But I'm afraid that every minute I take up of your and your guest, time will shorten the digital reception that awaits us. And I don't want to do that. Furthermore, Mr. Barton, I think I have proved convincingly that you are a top scientist who has gained international acclaim in the scientific communities of mathematics and computer science. You have contributed in a significant way to the status of science. You shared your knowledge and put yourself in the service of younger generations and other disciplines. In addition, you have been extremely helpful to the national and international scientific community in several ways. Josephus Cornelis Maria Baten, it's my really an honor to inform you that His Majesty the King has approved your nomination as officer in the Order of Oranje Nassau. Congratulations, and due to the corona measurements, I will hand to you this insignia at a later date in person. So, Jos, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. Thank you. Did you see that coming? Uh, not really. <laughs> uh, when we did the rehearsal, this wasn't in it. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, that uh, would ruin the surprise, so we kept uh -huh. it for now. Okay. How, how do you feel about this? Um, yeah, well, I have to get used to being an officer. Uh, that's new to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big sign of recognition for your work. Yeah, well, I'm impressed, yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a, a, a yeah. well-deserved, and I think that all of the uh, CWI community can agree that it's a well-deserved recognition for everything that you did and that you stood for. So I'd say, yeah. guys around me, one more applause for Jos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah.